Ellian Dollard. Live from Waterford and on Garvin. This is Waterford at One. Good afternoon, I'm Liz Reddy. Today's top stories, Waterford Sinn Féin TD David Colnan says more critical care beds are urgently needed at UHW. The judge will be able to consider a range of factors when sentencing two teenage boys convicted of murdering Anna Kriegel. Garthi and Waterford arrested 13 people yesterday as part of an operation cracking down on organised crime. A Waterford TD says more critical care beds are urgently needed at University Hospital Waterford. It's after several cancer patients had their surgeries cancelled last Friday due to a lack of beds. Sinn Féin's David Conan says it's happening on a regular basis and it's not good enough. But when it gets to a point that you don't have enough critical beds to make sure that older people who have cancer and people who need surgeries when they need them are not getting them, I think that... Uh, that's a poor state of affair and that's not down to the wonderful staff at the hospital, that's down to capacity. So I'm asking you to raise this directly with the Minister for Health and if you can correspond with me in terms of when those patients who are told to go home will have their appointments rescheduled. Minister of State Finian McGrath told the Doyle that demand for critical care beds last Friday exceeded what was available. He says they don't take the decision to cancel surgeries lightly. I fully acknowledge the distress and the inconvenience for patients and their families where elective procedures are cancelled, particularly for clinical urgent procedures. Furthermore, any decision to delay admission or treatment is not taken lightly, and where such decisions are made, they are done to ensure a safe environment with safe delivery of care to all patients as the priority at all times. University Hospital Waterford is one of the worst hit hospitals for patients waiting for beds today. Nationally, 441 admitted patients are waiting for beds, according to today's INMO Trolley Watch. Cork University Hospital has the highest number of patients on trolleys at 43. The figure in University Hospital Galway is 38 and 35 at UHW. A school report and a psychiatric report are among the factors the judge can take into account when sentencing the two teenage boys found guilty of murdering Anna Kriegel. One of the boys has also been found guilty of sexually assaulting the 14-year-old schoolgirl at a derelict farmhouse in Lucan, County Dublin, in May last year. They've both been remanded in custody at a juvenile detention centre before their sentencing hearing on July 15th. Criminal barrister Barry Ward says the judge will have some discretion when sentencing the two boys. In normal murder conviction of an adult, the judge has no discretion but to impose a mandatory life sentence. In the case of a juvenile, that's being a person under 18, that's not mandatory. So the judge has much more discretion in terms of how he deals with with this particular case. Uh, What the Children Act says is that any judge sentencing any person under 18 uh, must consider a whole range of other factors. Garthi in Waterford arrested 13 people yesterday as part of an operation cracking down on organised crime. They were detained for various offences ranging from theft, drugs and assault. Four premises were searched under drug warrants while seven people were searched. 14 crime prevention and intelligence gathering checkpoints were also conducted. The Finance Minister has stood by promises of major tax cuts in the coming budget. Fine Gael has committed to raising the point at which people pay the higher tax rate uh, to €50,000. The measure would cost billions over the next five years. Despite warnings from spending watchdogs to be prudent with the public purse, Minister Pascal Donoghue is sticking by the tax cut pledge. It is the government's position, however, that workers start to pay too high a rate of income tax at too low in income level. We cannot hope to remain competitive if someone on a relatively low income and who decides to work a few hours over time has nearly half that extra money taken in tax. A Waterford councillor says the cart can't be put before the horse when it comes to climate action. The government's new action plan contains more than 180 actions aimed at reducing emissions. Green Party councillor Marco Kasich has welcomed the scale of the ambition but says it's lacking detail in some areas. He's calling for a just transition. Let's say carbon pricing, for example. That has to be judged fairly so that the people who are least able to afford it are unable to make those transitions. And this is about 
not putting the cart before the horse, about planning in the correct way before we start increasing fuel costs, for example, for people driving around. We need to have the public transport options in first. A studio in Waterford City has appealed for help to find a new building for its artists. The Rogue Gallery Studios discovered recently that its premises is set to be demolished as part of the Michael Street Shopping Centre development. The building was a NAMA property before being turned over to developers. Janie Kavanagh is the studio's artistic director. In recent weeks, we got a deed of appointment from a receivership that is looking after the development of the Michael Street shopping centre. We are going to be looking at being vacated in the coming months and we don't have a timeline or a schedule for when this will happen. She hopes they can find a permanent space for the studios in the cultural quarter on O'Connell Street in Waterford. That is the prime location for us. Spaces like the Go For It building and the Youthrich building, which is going to soon come under possession of the Waterford Council, are prime buildings for that. If buildings are taken under possession, they have a certain shelf life that if people aren't in there and they're not opening up the windows, adding heat to it, buildings become damp, they become damaged. And what happens is then is that we have to turn a ton of money to repair all these buildings. The chairman of Dungarvan Council says the transformation of Abbeyside Bridge on the Waterford Greenway shows what the local community can do when dealing with areas where there is antisocial behaviour. Colin Byrne, founder of the branding agency Totem, got Waterford Walls, the council and sponsors together to deal with the area which was overgrown and litter strewn. UK street artist Curtis Helton spent the weekend creating the artwork and work is now underway to illuminate the area. Damien Gagan says it's completely rejuvenated the area. Yeah, any problems that you'd have with regard to people hanging around or maybe loitering in an area, the best thing you can do is engineer a solution to it and uh, that's what we've come up with here. It's going to be well lit in the night time so we, it should see an end to anybody that's, you know, maybe hanging around there, maybe ha- drinking or whatever. But uh, this actual part of the Greenway, before it was developed, was a place where people hung out and there was a lot of dumping and fires were lit around Halloween time and that, but it's absolutely beautiful. When we're here this morning, now the sun is shining and it's, you can see people walking into town there and it's just fantastic. Waterford Council Johnny Bronick says the bridge will become a point of interest on the Greenway. Probably a, a selfie stop for people to come along and take selfies with their with their loved ones when they come and either finish the Greenway or before they head out on their on their Greenway journey if they're heading in the other direction. And even for the local people and the local community, it, it just serves to brighten up the whole area. So it's it's really, I suppose, it's been definitely a, a positive development, and we're looking forward to seeing people's reactions to it. You know, here on the ground and on social media and everything. So it's it's we're, we're all very excited about it. UK artist Curtis Hilton will be back for the Waterford Wall Festival in August, where he which was invited to take part in last year. I was there last year, um, sort of as a last minute addition. We've got a great relationship with the guys now, and it's been really good. And going to be back there in August again. So my piece from last year, but that was um, like an environmentally themed piece. So it was kind of like a, an igret as well, um, like I painted here, but it had a, like a plastic fish in its mouth, um, just sort of to highlight those issues. And then um, I had the pleasure of painting their office as well. I did like lots of flowers. And WLR Sport. Thanks to Boland's High and Die Waterford. Preview the award winning 192 High and Die range. See Bolands.com. The Waterford County Board are currently waiting for the government to approve state funding for Walsh Park. Chairman Paddy Joe Ryan says it could be September before they receive the green light to start reconstruction work. We're waiting for confirmation from the government and from Cork Park for funding. We're hoping that that can be sorted out maybe, you know, certainly before September. These processes are very slow. You know, we are determined to complete the project as 15,000 stadium and there will be no half measures. Let it be done or it won't be done. So we're going ahead and we're hoping that Cork Park will put pressure on the government for the funding and then that and once it comes to funding, we'll leave a small leeway to be made up by the Waterford County Board. Abbeyside and Mount Sign will seek their second win in the County Senior Hurling Championship on Saturday evening in Walsh Park. Villagers boss Peter Queeley says it's been difficult to prepare for this game at short notice. As you look, I'd love to be here telling you, Tomás, the, the preparations are brilliant, you know, everything has gone great, but far from it, you know. Uh, and the only consolation, I suppose, for, for us is I feel a lot of clubs are in the same boat, you know, we don't know. What you, it's the type of provisional fixture, you don't know whether you're going to be playing or not playing, and in the middle of college exams in, in May 
Um, we had a number of injuries, you know, your fellas on county panels, a good few on county panels, you know, with the under-20 hurling, uh, senior football, uh, senior hurling, things like that, you know. So, you know, it's, it's been pretty disjointed, to be honest with you. But look, uh, we still have a, a decent 15 going out against Mount Sang. Throw in for that one. On Saturday is 7pm. To soccer now in League of Ireland, winners Dundalk face stern opposition if they get past Riga FC in the Champions League first qualifying round. Karabag of Azerbaijan or Albanian side Partizani Tirana await in the next round and Dundalk would be at home first in that tie if they were to progress. Andrew Ryan will become the first Waterford-born player to represent Ireland in a world ranking darts tournament in Holland this weekend. He'll wear the green Jersey in the Six Nations along with four other players. Andrew explains the format of the tournament. We're travelling to Assen in Holland on Thursday. Um, it's the Six Nations so in our group we have Holland and Wales and then you have Scotland, England and Northern Ireland then in the other group. It's, it's one of the toughest formats of the year. It's a one leg format so it's five players on each team so I'll play the five of them one leg on stage and then obviously my teammates then will play, the, play vice versa so it could be up first it could be up last you wouldn't know it's randomly selected so we play them on the Friday night um, and then Saturday morning then we play Wales and hopefully if we qualify then the finals then it'll be on Sunday Sports News on WLR brought to you by